Hello, everyone. Hello, Warrior Church. We are so excited to come to you this week with the next session in our study of the Word of God. And I believe that you're all ready to hear from God. We're going to pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for Warrior Church. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that is spreading the good news all over the world through people that believe in you. And I thank you, Father, for Warrior Church. I thank you for everyone watching. I thank you that the Spirit is able and willing to open our eyes and open our hearts and let us hear what it is that the Spirit is saying to the church today. And I thank you for it in the name of Jesus. So God bless you. Thanks for joining us. And I believe that this is going to be a eye-opening session because the Spirit of the Lord wants us to hook up with him and walk with him. And can you just imagine that the Holy Spirit is not a bird? He's not a, he came like a dove, but he, he didn't say he was a dove. And this is one of those misconceptions. Jesus said, there's going to be one like me. He's going to be a friend just like I am to you. And he's never going to leave you. He's going to be a advocate, a standby, a lawyer type person who's going to be right there. And he's never going to leave you as an orphan. This is the spirit of God that I met. He was a person. He was just like Jesus. He reminded me of Jesus and he is with all of us and he is within us mm -hmm. as well. So uh, all the all the redeemed of the Lord say so because the you, we're not left alone and we have the comforter inside of us. So when Paul the apostle was was talking to, to the people in the in the in the early church, he was writing letters and he was encouraging people to stay in the spirit. And this this is a common phrase that I use. Don't try to finish in the flesh what you began in the spirit, because this is what Paul said. Paul was talking to the Galatians and he actually said this. He said, listen, you were doing so well. Who cast an evil, a, a spell on you? Yeah. Uh, the word there is bewitched. Who, who cast a curse on you? Because you were doing so well. Who stepped in and broke your stride? You were doing so well. You were on pace to win, in other words. And this is, this is uh, how Paul talked to me. He said, you're, you're foolish. He said, you're foolish. And, um, you know, it's kind of funny. Um, there was one translation uh, of the Bible. Is, it's kind of like a, 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 a funny translation, but it, it is a, a translation of the Bible. He called them, you fish heads. <laughs> he called them, so that was one translation. But anyway, I don't know what that means. But anyway, he, he obviously was very, very frustrated with the Galatians. And, and why was that? Because if you remember in Romans, when he wrote to the Romans, he said in, in chapter 8, uh, those four, first four verses, he was talking about the fact that we have our file in heaven erased about our past, but then we're now, from now on, we're supposed to walk in the spirit. So, you know, he takes care of our past and he takes care of our past sins and our condition of sin. But then Paul said, now you got to walk in step, like keep in step with the spirit. So that has the idea of walking with him. And this is just like it was in the garden with, with God when he came down and walked with Adam and Eve. They, they walked around in the garden and had fellowship together. And God looked forward to that every day. And that was because we were sinless. But see, now I'm telling you, in heaven I saw that we are sinless by the blood of Jesus, that, that he is not counting our sins against us. Okay, so that being solved, Paul had taught all the churches now, okay, we've taken care of this, this situation. God is, is really not condemning you anymore. He, there's no accusing voice. But now keep in step with the spirit and don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, obviously, in this case, he was very frustrated with the Galatians. And, you know, I'm telling you this because I want all of you all over the world, all warrior churches all over the world, I want you to be mindful that your sins are forgiven and that today you have a new start. When you woke up, you're, the mercies of the Lord are new every morning. So you just wake up and, you know, it's a clean uh, slate. I remember uh, this device. I wanted one so bad and I finally got one. It was called an Etch-A-Sketch. And it had two knobs, it was red, and it had white knobs, and you could draw on it. And then you go like this, and it's gone, you know, and you can start over again. So you could draw, and, and then it was like that. And that's what the Lord did. He grabbed your Etch-A-Sketch, and he just shook it. And he, he shook you, and your sins are gone, you know. <laughs> it's erased. It's just like all the files are just missing. Um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's a mystery, uh, the goodness of God. But here's, here's what Paul said. He said, that it's been made clear to us that Jesus died for us. And it, may, it was made clear that he did all this. 
And we have to ask ourselves a question. When we receive the Holy Spirit, did we receive it so that we, we can obey the law of Moses? Or did, did the, the, when we receive the Spirit, did it cause us? it causes us to walk in the fulfillment of all the law and please God. So the fact of it is, is if you walk in the spirit, it says you please God. Okay, so it's not obeying every, all the, you know, I think there was, God gave uh, Moses 10 commandments, but when they were done with it, I think there were 611 that they had, commands that they had made. Uh, you know, so we can't, uh, we can't obey the law perfectly on our own, but the spirit fulfills all that if we, have the Spirit of God inside of us. And this is the discussion that Paul had. So I, I just would, I would just encourage you this week as you go forth is not only encourage yourself with this information and don't find yourself finishing your race in the flesh after you started it in the Spirit. And this is, this is what is talked about in Galatians chapter 3. And you, you ask yourself this question. If you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, then you can walk with Him and He's not going to lead you astray, but He's going to help you not only be pleasing to God, but you're going to end up in your destiny because that's where the Spirit of God is going to take you. So our, our new lives are in the Spirit. You know, when we got born again, everything was made new. We're, we're born again. We're made new inside. We're a new creature. But then our whole life is new because the Spirit of God is is taking us into this new realm of the spirit, this new way of life, you know, and we can yield to joy. We can yield uh, to happiness and we can yield to kindness. We can yield to love. We can yield to all these different things that the spirit of God has for us. But he is the central person right now that's on the earth with us. Jesus is at the right hand of God, the father. And of course, the father is seated on his throne and the Holy Spirit was sent on the day of Pentecost and he has uh, not left us and he will not leave us because Jesus said he will be with you forever. Okay, so if, if you are having trouble in your life right now and you're not, you're not able to do the things you want to do and you, you, you read chapter seven of Romans and you can identify maybe with what Paul's saying there, you know, that the things that I want to do, um, I, I can't do. And then the things I don't want to do, I find myself doing. Uh, Paul was describing what it was like to to not yield to the spirit. He was he was yielding to the flesh. He was trying to fulfill the law on his own. And this is what was happening with the Pharisees. They were teaching people, you got to do this, you got to do that. And Jesus said, you know, I came to take yokes off of people. I didn't come to, to put more on. He said, you're putting pe yokes on people and chaining them up. And um, I've come the, I've come to set them free. So the gospel has to be about that, about breaking yokes and, and uh, seeing people set free and teaching them the good news that the Spirit of God will lead us into a fulfillment of all the commands of God. And then Jesus even summed it up like this. He said, if you love God with all your heart and you love your neighbor as yourself, he said, you fulfill all the commandments, all of them. And think about it, you know, if we didn't, if we, if we did this, everyone, if everyone was born again and love God and love their neighbor as themselves, we wouldn't need, need police officers. We wouldn't need laws because we would walk in the law of love. So if you were, if you love someone, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to harm them or defraud them, hurt them in any way. And you'd be thinking of other people more than yourself. And so if we all looked out for each other, then we wouldn't need all these rules and laws and, and uh, different uh, law enforcement, uh, you know, people uh, watching over us. We would be mindful of each other. And the, one of the first sins uh, that, that really hit me, there was a, there's a list of sins that happened immediately after uh, Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden. We see the first murder, uh, you know, but right before the first murder, there's something that was even to me more troubling because it was the sign that something like murder was about to happen mm -hmm. with Cain and Abel. And that was when, uh, you know, you know when, when um, Cain just didn't do what was right. God said, if you do what is right, won't you be accepted? But instead, he went out and killed the person who, was, who had set the standard and had done it right. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of energy to, to go out and, yeah. and kill your brother you know, but think about this. Isn't it true 
that people would rather pull someone down than come up. Why, that it's harder. It's harder to pull someone down than it is just to come up to it. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. But this is what was troubling to me is, okay, we have the first murder, but see, it didn't have to happen. And God actually face-to-face talked to Cain to talk him out of it in a fallen state. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is what's troubling. When he did kill him, God came and said, where's your brother? And this is what Cain said, am I my brother's keeper? And this is more troubling to me because, yes, you are. (laughs) We all are. We're all supposed to be helping each other, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this, with this being said, this week, remember that you started in the spirit by being born again and believing in Jesus Christ. And now your walk from this day forth is a walk really in innocence because you've been, you've been uh, purged and forgiven of your sins, your past sins. So each day you walk in fellowship with God and you, if you even do sin, you can confess your sins and he's faithful and just to forgive us of all sins. But we don't have, we can choose to walk according to the spirit. But in that walk with the spirit, Be mindful that to fulfill the desires of the Spirit, He's thinking of everybody else around you too. And it's amazing how uh, if we all got together and and agreed, it would be like Jesus said, if you or two or more agree as touching any one thing, it shall be done for you. I mean, like right now, I mean, there's enough at the table to change history just at this table right now. So all over the world as you're watching us, think about how many warrior churches are meeting this week and how many of you, if you just agree as touching any one thing and if you'll believe in your heart and say it with your mouth and, and say, you know, say to this mountain, be cast in the sea, if you believe it in your heart and say it with your mouth, it shall be done. And if you agree, all of us agree as touching this one thing, it'll be done. And it'll be just like, it'll be just like when the Tower of Babel was being built and God said, these people are evil. They're bent on evil. But if we don't confuse them and stop them, whatever they imagined, they're going to be able to do. So God had to come down and stop them because they could do. He says that anything they imagine, they'll be able to do. So it was because of their unity. So, so, it, so this is the key now that Satan knows that. He knows that he's got to keep people divided in the church, in the body of Christ, so, because if we agree as on anything, it's going gonna, it's gonna to defeat him every time. So anyway, I, um, I feel like if you would discuss this among yourselves now, uh, and, and uh, you know, in the time that we have uh, right now, I'm going to pray for you. But after this is over, you all get together, and I have a couple questions that I would like you to talk about. One of them is, is if Paul was upset with the Galatians, and he was, it was enough to say, who has put a, who, what witch has put a curse on you? Who's bewitched you? To, for him to say that strong of a language, discuss among yourself how serious it is if you are to start to work your, your, your salvation out in the flesh rather than in the spirit. Because he did say this, you started in the spirit. So now are you going to finish in the flesh? Mm-hmm. So I want you to discuss that. Because it is that important. Paul was an apostle, but he was a father. And he was, he, he was jealous over the Galatians. In other words, he, he was protective over them. And he, he knew that, that this is not very good. So all of you to talk about some of the ways. The, the second thing I want you to talk about is some of the ways that, that you could be mindful Uh, signs that you might be going over into the flesh and you might start to work it uh, to the point where you're you're it's like a a cosmetic surface thing but it's not a heart thing anymore and we we see people like that all the time that we have to kind of retrieve because they they get disillusioned and they start to do things uh, cosmetically on the surface but you know Christianity is just not works your works are birthed out of your faith, but your faith is expressed through action. And that's what James was talking about. 
But we don't just do things to, ple to, to make God happy with us because God's happy with you because of Jesus' blood. So anyway, I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for all my family all over the world. I thank you, Lord, that we here at Warrior Church and at Warrior Notes, we, we love you, Father. And we lift our hands and worship you right now. And we thank you that we will not yield to the flesh. We, Lord, will always yield to your Holy Spirit so that we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And we thank you, Father, that you give us strength and boldness and discernment to know when we are getting over in the flesh. And I thank you, Father, you're going to have grace and mercy on all. And that we just turn ourselves in right now and we just yield to your spirit in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God is with you in a mighty way. Just, just go out and have a great week. Remember, there's people around you hurting. There's people that need to hear the good news. And, and remember that the Spirit of God, just like Jesus said in the garden before he was crucified, he said, the Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And just remember that, that God is always willing to move. Um, I was told by Jesus that the Spirit at any one second is ready to act on your behalf. He's always ready. God bless you. We'll see you next time. All right, welcome to the first ever Warrior Fellowship for ex Jehovah's Witnesses. <clears throat> so we have the study guide here. Um, <laughs> nobody showed up tonight, so it's just me and the Holy Spirit and whoever's watching on the YouTube recording. So I'm going to go ahead and start reading Galatians 3, 1 through 3. It says, O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are you now being made perfect by the flesh? So I know a lot of you Jehovah's with XJ-dubs could relate to that because, you know, we were like all about works before. All right, so then uh, let me read the discussion part. Jesus said the Holy Spirit would come and he would never leave you. He would be like Jesus as your advocate, a standby and lawyer type who would never leave you as an orphan. He came like a dove, but he is not a bird. And then Kevin said, when he met him, he was just like Jesus, and he reminded him of Jesus. Paul the Apostle was talking to the people in the early church in Galatia, and he was encouraging them to stay in the Spirit. And he said, you were doing so well. Who cast a spell on you? Who bewitched you and broke your stride? And then the second paragraph. He was very frustrated with them because they weren't walking in the Spirit of God. Like the early church, we should be aware and not fulfill the lust of the flesh, but stay in the step with the Spirit. Jesus took care of the issue of sin, so there is no condemning or accusing voice, and the mercies of the Lord are new every morning. When you wake up this morning, it was a, it was a clean slate, and your sins are gone. We are a new creation. Our new lives are in the Spirit. When we become born again, everything was made new. Our whole life is new because the Spirit of God is taking us into a new realm of the Spirit. In this new way of life, we can yield to joy. We can yield to kindness and love. We can yield to all the different things that the Spirit of God has for us. He is the central person right now that's on the earth with us. If you walk in the Spirit, the Bible says you please God. We can't obey the law perfectly on our own, but with the Holy Spirit inside of us, we can fulfill the law. He's going to help you and not lead you astray. With the help of the Holy Spirit, you will not only be pleasing to God, but you're going to end up in your destiny because that's where the Spirit of God is going to take you. All right, so first question. 
Ask yourself this question. When you received the Holy Spirit, did you receive him so that you can obey the law of Moses or so that you could walk in the fulfillment of the law in honor of God? And then it says, discuss the benefits of walking in the fulfillment of the law and living by the Spirit. So since I'm by myself, I'm going to discuss this amongst myself and see what I think about what I have to say. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, obviously, no, I did not receive him so that I could obey the law of Moses. I received him so that I could walk in the fulfillment of the law and honor of God. Jesus fulfilled the law, so we don't have to do uh, all those commandments in the Bible and the Old Testament. Anybody who comes to you and says that you need to be doing uh, the Sabbath, you need to be circumcised. You got to celebrate this or that. You can't eat that. Like they're living in the law. You can eat pork. As a born again Jew, you are allowed to eat pork. And the benefits of walking in the fulfillment of law and living by the Spirit. Uh, you, let me pull this scripture up. John eight thirty two. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And in Romans 8, 2, For in Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life, set you free from the law of sin and death. And in 1 Corinthians seven twenty two, For he who was a slave when he was called by the Lord is the Lord's freed man. Conversely, he who was a free man when he was called is Christ's slave. So we are delivered. Thank God. Honestly, this was like when I got born again, when I got born again, or at least when I, I, yeah, I guess, yeah, when I got born again, I was so relieved that I didn't have to go out on Saturdays going door to door bothering people. Man, I was so relieved I didn't have to do that. Just the depression I felt going to the kingdom hall. This is the Lord, the truth set me free. All right, yield to the spirit, not to the flesh. Romans seven fifteen and the and New Living Translation. I don't really understand myself. For I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. Paul is describing what it's like when he doesn't yield to the Holy Spirit. He was yielding to the flesh. He was trying to fulfill the law on his own. Jesus said, I came to take the yokes off people, and the Pharisees were putting them back on and chaining people up. The gospel breaks yokes and chains off of people and sets them free. Teach others that the Spirit of God leads them into a fulfillment of all the commands of God. Jesus said, if you love God with all your heart and you love your neighbors as yourself, you fulfill all the commandments. If everyone loved God and loved their neighbor as themselves, we wouldn't need police officers or laws because we would be walking in the law of love. If you love others, you won't want to harm, defraud, or hurt them in any way. You'd be thinking of them more than yourself. If we all look out for each other, then we don't need all these rules or laws and law enforcement or people watching over us. We would be mindful of each other. Take a moment and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to your hearts. Welcome him to have his way and release any chains that are binding. Pray for the condition of your hearts to be open to receiving all that the Holy Spirit wants to do today to see his love manifest in you. So let's take a moment and do that. All right, defeating the enemy with unity. One of the first sins that happened immediately after Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden was with Cain. We see the first murder, but right beforehand, there's something that was even more troubling because it was a sign that murder was about to happen. It was when Cain didn't do what was right. He was given a way out. God went face to face with Cain to talk him out of it in a fallen state. God said to Cain, if you do what is right, you will be accepted. But he did not, and he chose to kill Abel. It takes a lot of energy to go out and kill your brother. It's harder to pull someone down than it is to come up. 
When Cain killed Abel, God asked him, Where is your brother? Cain responded with, Am I my brother's keeper? This is more troubling to hear because, yes, you are. We're all supposed to be helping one another. If we as a whole came together and agreed, it would be like Jesus said, If two or more agree as touching any one thing, it shall be done for you. It would be like when the Tower of Babel was being built and God said, These people are evil, they're bent on evil, and if we don't confuse them and stop them, whatever they imagine they're going to be able to do. God had to come down and stop them because anything they imagined they would be able to do. It was because of their unity. It's a key, and Satan knows he has to keep people divided in the body of Christ, because if we agree on anything, it's going to defeat him every time. So what are some things that you can agree upon as a body of Christ? How can you help one another at this time in the earth? There are no limitations in the kingdom. How can you push through what might be happening in the natural to see the Spirit of God be made manifest on in earth? Uh, you know, uh, as ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, one thing we can do is... <sighs> You know, everyone goes their way after coming out, after waking up from the, the organization. Uh, we don't all have to. One thing that we can agree is that we don't have to agree on everything. You know, uh, a lot of people think that Jehovah is a Freemasonic God, and it's not true. And I don't go on uh, Reddit and start debating people, correcting them, because I don't have to be right. And uh, if you fall into uh, believing a doctrine that you've learned by yourself, you don't have to argue with people and convince them that you're right. So we can agree as the body of Christ to disagree. That's why all these denominations have been formed. You have the Baptists, the Southern Baptists, the Catholics, the Pentecostals, uh, the Assembly of God. I mean, it just goes on and on. And it's like, What's the difference? They just uh, one group believes in pre-trib, one group believes in post-trib, and so they separate themselves. And that's sex and divisions are not of the spirit of God. All right. Discuss the significance of starting in the spirit and finishing well. Talk about the severity of Paul's question to the Galatians concerning who put a curse on them or bewitched them, that they would allow starting in the spirit and ending in the flesh. This is a tough question, man. I can't, I don't know how to answer this question, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to pretend as if I know the answer. What are some signs that you might be going in the way of the flesh rather than the spirit? I can tell you very easily. Today, uh, my grandmother almost hit a car. And she, she breaks like violently and makes a sound, you know, like a scream. And then she puts her hand on my stomach and I got... Because I'm in the passenger side while she's driving. And I got so angry that she did that to me. And, like, I pushed her arm off. And I said, like, don't touch me like that, you know. And uh, that was fleshly. That was manifestation of anger and pride. And I had to control myself better. My grandfather likes to... Uh, say things that he just knows he just goes out of his way to anger anger me and i i react and i shouldn't and that's a sin and i have to i have to control my anger Okay, has your connection to God turned from the heart to more of a surfaced thing? Have you entered into a works-based relationship? Remember, your works are birthed out of your faith, but your faith is expressed through action. We don't do things to make God happy with us. He's happy with you because of Jesus' blood. That's a 
Amazing question there. I know I'm not in a workspace relationship because I don't take the time card anymore and record how many hours I preach this month. So if you're a Jehovah's Witness, I'm sorry, but you are in a workspace relationship. Uh, works is repentance. I don't count how many times I repent. You know, you just do it out of your heart. And I don't count, I don't like, I don't try to meet an, a specific amount of hours prayed every single week, right? Like, oh, I'm going to impress God. I'm going to pray the most out of anyone on this earth and go 12 hours a day. Like, that's just works. All right. So we have a prayer and then we're done with the, uh, the discussion here father in the name of jesus i thank you for all of my family all over the world i thank you lord we're here at warrior church and at warrior notes we love you father and we lift our hands and worship you right now we thank you that we will not yield to the flesh we lord will always yield to our holy spirit so that we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh we thank you, Father, that you give us strength and boldness and discernment to know when we are getting over in the flesh. And I thank you, Father, you're going to have grace and mercy on all. We just turn ourselves in right now and we yield to your spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Shut this down. So, this is our first XJW Warrior Fellowship, and it is week 18. Uh, nobody showed up tonight, but it will, trust me, there's, people used to criticize me all the time when our slash Jehovah's Witnesses had like five people commenting, and I would get it all the time. There's nobody here. There's this is us. There's no one here. You're wasting your time. And I will keep telling them it's like that right now. This is the Genesis. Big things have small beginnings. And I'm not saying that I actually care about how many people come, but this group will get bigger and there will be people here. And I know from past experience that it, it will snowball. And uh, what I'm planning on doing is. If anybody's familiar with Six Screens at the Watchtower, hosted by Rick Farron, um, <clears throat> he like it's like an open mic night. Anybody's allowed to chip in, so that's the plan: is to let people come in and then and then talk and then and because it's a a group video call on Signal, and I'm gonna put the link in the description so you can join. Um, I don't even have to. I could. You know, I'm not, I don't have to be present for you guys to talk amongst each other in the video. I could leave right now. The video, we keep going and you guys can keep talking. And, uh, yeah. And then we'll have people give parts after afterwards. Nobody will hijack the warrior fellowship though. When, uh, until after the, um, the study guides completed, we have to have order and balance. So I'm not going to let people just hijack it. Once that's over and we get, the uh the fellowship done then the fault this part right here the following part would be like you know uh anything goes as long as it's <laughs> not sinful obviously um yeah so have a good night god bless you